Our master of ceremonies for this morning is truly an inspirational hero. As a U.S. Army lieutenant, she was seriously wounded by a roadside bomb while riding in a convoy through Baghdad in 20, 2004. The blast resulted in an amputation above her left knee, and she holds the distinction of being the first U.S. female to lose a limb in active combat. Medically retired with a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star, she went on to swim in the 2009 Beijing Paralympics. She is also a three-time paratriathlon world champion and a bronze medalist from the 2016 Rio Paralympics. A mother of two, she is married to her husband Brian and hopes to compete again at the Tokyo Paralympic Games in 2020. Please give a warm welcome to Melissa Stockwell. Thank you. Thank you so much. What a warm welcome and what an honor to be here. 100 years. I am honored and grateful to be among such distinguished guests and other veterans. So thank you for having me. When I woke up in the Baghdad emergency room on April 13th of 2004, I knew that my life was drastically changed. I was still in my Army DCUs, but the lingering smell of smoke, a lingering ringing in my ears, and the most noticeable difference in that I no longer had my left leg. My left leg was gone, taken from me by a roadside bomb, and subsequently becoming the first female to lose a limb in active combat in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Obviously a title that nobody ever expects or wants, nor were the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star that came along with it, but a title that I have taken in stride and used to motivate myself and hopefully others in not wanting to let losing a leg stop me from doing anything that I wanted to do with my life. I like to say that I was born a patriot, as I'm sure many of you were. I grew up always wanting to serve, wanting to wear the uniform with that flag patch on my shoulder and give back to a country that had given us so much. I don't come from a military family, so when anybody asked why I wanted to join the Army, my answer was short and sweet, because I love our country. And as my parents' youngest daughter, they were once skeptical of me joining the military, but they soon learned to love it, as I did, always strong and steadfast by my side. I was a proud Army cadet at the University of Colorado in Boulder, and then when I was commissioned as a second lieutenant, I was a proud officer as I went to my first duty assignment at Fort Hood, Texas as part of the 1st Cavalry Division. Proud to wear a uniform, the same uniform as my male counterparts, proving firsthand that it didn't matter what gender you were, we were all part of the same team, all together for the greater good. I was at Fort Hood for five months when orders came down that the 1st Cav Division was going to deploy to Iraq. So in March of 2004, I boarded a plane with the destination of Kuwait and the start of what was going to be a year-long tour. I had two jobs over in Iraq, and my favorite one was as a platoon leader because I got to lead soldiers, both younger and older than I was, and in my mind, they were 20 of the greatest soldiers that I've ever been in contact with. My time in Iraq was cut quite short when three weeks into my tour, the fateful day of April 13, 2004, happened. Like m many things in life, the day didn't really go as planned. And instead of ending on my cot in the town of Taji, just north of Baghdad, I ended in the Baghdad emergency room, coming out of a life-saving surgery, as the surgeon next to me told me that I no longer had my left leg. 24 years of my life with both of my legs, and suddenly, I was missing one. But looking back so many years, I realized that that is the day that my real life's journey began. 
And from there, I was sent to Walter Reed, where I was, did my recovery, and then I was medically retired from the Army. So while my service was short, it was very eventful. But that service is what led me here, from the streets of Baghdad to the halls of Walter Reed, overcoming the loss of a leg, becoming a proud athlete, and living a life of sport proving that losing a leg doesn't have to stop you from doing anything that you want to do. Proudly representing our country in two Paralympic Games. Most recently in 2016 in the Rio Paralympic Games where I got to wait race on September 11th of 2016 representing a country that I defended over in Iraq and coming across the finish line in third place and being able to stand on that podium receive my medal and showing the world how much ability was in a disability. And truly one of the greatest moments of my entire life. And then now a proud wife, an extremely proud mother of two young children, a forever proud American and a proud above the knee amputee, and of course, a proud veteran. It's been a journey. The last 14 years have been a journey, quite the journey, but I wouldn't have it any other way. It's been a journey that has taught me that regardless of obstacles that come our way in life, we, have the, we all have the ability to overcome those obstacles. And a lot of times we end up even better on the other side. It's a journey that taught me about teamwork, the power of surrounding ourselves with people, a country that care about us and that want us to get better and to improve. It's a journey that taught me that, we have, that there is a way to make any difficulties that come our way desirable. It truly is an honor to be here today. And I, as we all continue our life's journey, let's work together. Let's be true to ourselves. Let's believe in who we are and let's never stop believing in the greater good of America by standing tall, standing proud, flying our flags as high as we can. Together, we will, we will continue to be the greatest country in the world. I know there are a lot of veterans out there. I think probably all of you are. So, so from one veteran to another, thank you. To the American Legion, thank you for standing up for veterans like all of us and helping us be the best that we can be. It truly is an honor. Thank you for having me. The 2017 American Legion Baseball All-Academic Team Captain is Trace Henry from Tupelo, Mississippi. A 2017 graduate of Moorville High School in Moorville, Mississippi, he graduated fourth in his class and maintained a place on the superintendent's honor roll throughout his high school career. He plans to attend Jones County Junior College and eventually transfer to obtain a degree in civil engineering, sponsored by Lee County Post 49 in Tupelo, Mississippi. Due to prior obligations, Trace is unable to attend today. Please give him a warm round of applause. Our next youth champion was elected as president of Boys Nation last month. He hails from Newport Coast, California, and exhibits an incredible passion for politics, debate, and business. In his downtime, he enjoys spending time with friends, reading, watching Formula One, and cheering on his New Orleans Saints and Los Angeles Lakers. He plans to pursue a career in business, finance, or politics. Sponsored by Newport Harbor Post 291, please welcome your 2018 Boys Nation president, Joshua Cheadle. Good morning. I sit in my dorm room, surrounded by some of my closest new friends as we get caught up in passionate policy discussions. And I realize the power of Boys Nation. Sitting there, I was surrounded by some of the kindest, brightest high school seniors from Alaska to Arkansas, Delaware to California, 
into Alabama to Arizona, from all over this great nation. The Boys Nation program gave me perspective, an understanding of our sacred political process, and an even greater appreciation for learning from and engaging with others. Because of this week that has shaped and will continue to shape my lifetime, I'd like to thank Sandy Schneeberger and everyone who has supported me at Post 291 in Newport Beach. My teachers at Sage Hill School, like Mr. Jordan, Dr. Farish, and Mr. Anderson, who always encourage me. My loving and supportive parents and brothers. Counselors like Ryan Silver and Tim Abadura Jr. and Sr., who like many of you guys have dedicated decades of their lives to the selfless service of others and the American Legion. The American Legion has created countless invaluable programs to teach about the power of democracy and to spread patriotism into the minds and hearts of young people across this great nation. Lastly, I want to thank all of the veterans who have put their lives on the line and stood to fight when the fate of our country hung in the balance, for it is because of their sacrifices that I have the absolute privilege of standing before you here today and proudly calling myself an American. Thank you. The 2018 Eagle Scout of the Year is from Denver, Colorado. For his Eagle Scout project, he partnered with more than 35 businesses and his troop to redevelop the grounds at the Denver Indian Center. He raised more than $20,000 for the project and provided 356 volunteer hours. A senior at Denver East High School, he aspires to attend a university with a program in military history and international relations or foreign service. Please give a warm round of applause for the 2018 Eagle Scout of the Year, Michael John Ankner. Hello. Gadugi, a defining value of the Cherokee people, means coming together for the betterment of the entire community. This value has great power. By working together, we improve our society, making it better for everyone in ways we could not alone. Scouting has instilled the power of coming together, of Gadugi, in me. I have witnessed the impacts of scouting's vast network of volunteers and supporters, of its merit badges incurring civic, civil responsibility, and of its Eagle Scout service projects that bring communities together to achieve what could not be done alone. The American people also value Gadugi. Coming together has been central to the heritage of the American nation since its earliest days. Thirteen states united to fight for their independence and adopted as their motto, E Pluribus Unum, out of many one. The nation they brought forth is vast, with diverse beliefs and backgrounds, and it is dedicated to the noble cause of liberty and democracy. And that noble cause continues to bring us together to this day. I am deeply honored to have been selected as the American Legion 2018 Eagle Scout of the Year. The American Legion itself is the living embodiment of citizens coming together for the common good. Thank you for your service to protect our country, your support of scouting and education, and the example you set. I would also like to thank all of those who helped me along my path to Eagle, including Troop 199 and St. John's Lutheran Church of Denver, the Denver Area Council, the American Legion Department of Colorado, and Denver Post One. Thank you to all the donors and volunteers that supported my Eagle project, and to all my teachers, coaches, friends, and of course my family, who has taught and supported me along the way. The joy and honor of serving our community has changed my life. As a senior in high school, I will lead a Colorado statewide student voter registration drive to help, I hope to continue to live up to this honor and to serve our nation in its noble cause in the spirit of Gadugi and E Pluribus Unum, 
as I enter college and throughout my adult life. Thank you. In competition in Colorado Springs a few weeks ago, two youth champions took top prize in the 28th Junior Air Rifle Championships. Jared Eddy from Midland, Georgia, claimed a precision champion title with an overall score of 2,475 out of a possible 2,509. He shoots for Old Mill Rangers and is headed to West Virginia University. Please welcome our 2018 precision champion, Jared Eddy. Good morning. First, thank you for having me here this morning. It truly is an honor to speak before you. I would like to begin with a huge thank you to my family. I can't stress it enough. Thank you for supporting me, fun pushing me past my limits, loving me unconditionally, funding my expensive sport, and having the patience to watch me grow. Because where would any of us be today without family? Whether that be blood related, a close bond amongst a group of people, a community, or all of the above. Thank you to the coaches that aid me along my way, including Lisa Kelly, Sergeant Major Frank Tuggle, Sergeant First Class George Norton, and John Hammond. It truly has been an amazing journey so far, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds. Thank you to the Americanism Commission for all of its volunteers and staff that work to make this experience possible for young men like me. Thank you to the Barnett Harris Post 15 back home in Georgia. Thank you to all the officials here and around the country that give the youth of America a chance as golden as this one. Thank you for making this convention and all the youth groups and championships happen. I will proudly use the scholarship given to me to further my education as I study biomedical engineering at West Virginia University these next four years. After college, I plan to go on to med school and become an orthopedic surgeon. Thank you to the American Legion for all the opportunities you have given me. God bless America. In the sporter category, the championship was captured by a young shooter representing Zion Benton High School, NJROTC, in Zion, Illinois. She won the title with the final score of 93.7, with the final aggregated score of 2,314 out of a possible 2,400. Please welcome our 2018 sporter shooting champion, Bailey Hornick. For me, becoming an American Legion National Champion was more than just a personal goal or outstanding achievement. On July 21st, three days before my journey to Colorado Springs, one of my closest friends, Dwayne, was involved in a motorcycle accident that left him in a coma. His family and I were all overcome with grief, so I told myself that I had to win in Colorado Springs to give myself and his family a glimpse of hope for the future. And so I won. And I would like to thank the entire American Legion family, especially the Americanism Commission and all of its volunteers, for not only all of your hours of hard work and undying support, but also for giving my mother and Dwayne's family something to smile about. You have turned our tears of pain into those of joy, and that for me means more than just a medal. Dwayne has since been opening his eyes and squeezing our hands, and I cannot wait to tell him this story. So once again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. This experience will be in mine and my family's memories forever. May the Lord bless Dwayne and may the Lord bless all of you. Thank you. Our last youth champion hails from Paducah, Kentucky. She displayed her passion and desire to learn about the U.S. Constitution with her prepared oration entitled, Limited Government, Our Right and Responsibility. She's an avid runner, a dark chocolate connoisseur, and has a deep love for this country. She's currently a freshman at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, and plans to major in genetics, genomics, and biotechnology, specializing in emergency medicine. Sponsored by Post 73 in Murray, Kentucky, please welcome your 2018 National Oratorical Contest winner, Carlissa Frederick. 
Good morning. I am honored to be with you today. The American Legion theme this previous year, Family First, has been a prevalent motto in my life. First, I think of my family, who have been my greatest cheerleaders. However, as I reflected on my experience in the oratorical competition, I found new meaning in this familiar phrase. I had incredible support from Mark and Jackie Kennedy, post-73, the Department of Kentucky, and the American Legion as a whole. Allow me to share an experience from the national level of the oratorical competition, which exemplifies the caliber of this great organization. The final performance required delivery of my speeches in a spacious room without sound amplification. Due to recent illness, I began to doubt the reliability of my voice. A need was conveyed for throat lozenges, and I soon had donations from multiple legionnaires representing different posts and branches of service. This experience culminated with a legionnaire who ran to the hotel store and purchased a package of cough drops. He conveyed the selfless nature of the American Legion when my mother tried to repay him, and he shook his head and simply stated, we are a family here. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to be part of this family. I am honored the members of this family loved this country enough to sacrifice much that I may succeed. Your sacrifice is much deeper than a monetary contribution of a scholarship, though that sacrifice is greatly appreciated. Greater than that were the years of your life, leaving the comforts of your home and your sense of security, that I may have the freedoms I know today. Both of my grandfathers, both of my parents, each of you and countless others who have loved and served this great nation are the reason I am here. I thank each of you. The purpose of the oratorical competition has certainly been realized with me. It has been life-changing. While I initially entered for a merit scholarship, I left with much more substantially increased knowledge of and love for our Constitution, deeper desire to preserve our founding principles and be an active, informed member of my nation, greater respect for those who protect me and this country, and increased love for all whom I call family. Thank you.